G'day, it's Sean here, and we are going to be playing Police Quest, the original Police Quest from 1987. And the Police Quest series is actually one that I didn't get into until a lot later. Uh, I played through the quest for, first couple of quests for glory, so I'd actually probably moved to the point and click games before I went back and found the Police Quests. And I played Police Quest 3 first. So I didn't really understand the connection with Marie and all that sort of thing, but there we go. So, Al Lowe's a programmer on this, as is Scott Murphy, as is Ken Williams. And Mark Crow, responsible for a lot of the graphics in this game. Now there's an interesting story about um, Al Lowe that's in my book, The Sierra Adventure where he tells when Legend Seat Larry had been finished and it started to sell but it wasn't selling very well and he was concerned that it was um, going to be a flop and they'd be out of work so he quickly got himself another job as a programmer on Police Quest. Now the, uh, the reality as we all know Larry is a massively successful and famous series now but it grew. Um, that first week's sales you know, each each month it would double and it would double and it would double until it was a absolute massive hit. And the original Larry went on to sell about a quarter of a million copies, which is amazing numbers in those days. So in this game, you are playing Sonny Bonds, and you are basically your job is to discover and defeat the Death Angel, who is a drug dealer who is working in town. If you want to sum up this game. It's an 80s cop movie. It really is. There is some really uh, great story in this. Now, it was uh, designed and written by Jim Walls. Now, Jim Walls was a retired highway patrolman who'd uh, had some things happen, and he uh, retired, and uh, Ken met him, and they ended up uh, deciding to work together to do a police game, and uh, Ken helped him come up with some ideas and refine those ideas and create a game out of it. Now, um, what's probably not too well known is that the main, I suppose you would call him the producer of this game, was Mark Crow. And Mark, as well as the uh, animator on it, he was asked to take Jim, who had no experience in making games before this game, turned out to be an excellent game designer, did a lot of good stuff, uh, but uh, Mark took him sort of showed him the ropes early on and helped him refine the ideas and how they were going to put the game together. So um, that's a bit of interesting trivia. Now, the other thing about this game is it is very procedural. It's, you've really got to follow police procedure. And as a game of this day, you've got to read the manual that came with the game. And the manual has call signs and numbers in it and procedures to follow. One of those procedures is, you know, make sure you take a shower at the beginning of a shift. So, open door, towel. Regulations require a shower before changing. So there are Sonny in his towel. Actually, that's a cool little graphic as well, by the way, if you, if you didn't notice that. As he walks out, he's got the towel around him, but if he gets close enough, you see the towel. Just get thrown there so he's naked, so have a shower. Have a nice hot shower. Shrug. No, can't do that. difference between an oral and rectal thermometer by the taste. Oh my goodness, that's horrible. Don't need to raise my camera anymore. Should have left the blue room earlier last night. So, setting up the blue room as a place that the cops go. Too cheap to share at home. <laughs> you get the feeling that that is someone 
<laughs> Get the feeling that's a joke that uh, Jim Walls had. Somebody worked with at one point. So we're going to need to get our car keys. Love these old AGI games where you can pre type things because <laughs> it doesn't pause the game like the later SCI games. Deed extender. I don't think, I was going to say kids, but I don't think anyone under the age of 40 would know what an extender is nowadays. Oh, I spent too long. Ha! Well, there you go. Ha! I didn't realise you couldn't shower before that, so let's um my save games are pretty terrible here. Gotta be honest, this is actually pretty poor programming. So you gotta open door, get in car, close door, wear belt. And you gotta do it every single time. Let me see if I can. So you gotta type like six things every time you start the car, so. Now this is driving. Now normally you'd be in a police car, but because I died, I didn't bother getting the car. So uh, we'll start there. And you drive around. Now, this is what I love about this game. It's an overhead map. And it's just... Where am I? There I am. <laughs> it's just a... It's a great way, and it's different, of doing it. i got to remember as a Aussie that I drive on the other side of the road than these guys, so I always default to the left instead of the right. So it's a great game. I love this idea that you drive around this massive map. So it doesn't have that open world feel that, say, a King's Quest or something like that at the time had. It is more a uh, you drive around, you go to a particular screen uh, area, and you go from there. So if I was to run those red lights that would be game over. That is how harsh this game is. It is a harsh game. When it comes to death. So that's driving around, which is pretty cool. The other one is that if we go to this screen, now for those astute players amongst us, and this is probably fairly common knowledge to Sierra fans, but this screen is identical to one in Leisure Suit Larry, the original Leisure Suit Larry, both of which had a certain Mark Crow as the artist. The only difference is that this is a disco in um, in Larry, has the word disco there and a bouncer out the front, but that's it. And you would recognize that this would have been drawn for Larry first. Larry was designed before this game, but also it has the, um, I guess, the telephone poles with that yellow sign on it there which is very unique and you see that in Larry a lot so it's getting faster get in close door wear seat belt drive so it's very frustratingly slow so that is police quest a lot of great little things in this game. A lot of um, good little areas to go to. As I said, it is an 80s cop movie. It really is. So you will either love that or hate it. And um, there's probably a bit of humour in it as well, which I don't really know why is there for an 80s cop game. It's like once I watched a uh, movie and it was just a great action movie. And it was an 80s action movie. And what happened is the main character is walking down a hallway and a young couple is walking behind him. 
the main actor turns into his room and what you would expect is that the camera would follow and see what happens in the room but the camera didn't the camera stayed on the young couple they went into their room and then there was a sex scene and then the per, the, the main character woke up the next morning in his room and everything went on as normal and it was just this random sex scene and that is very similar to the humor in police quest every so often there is something random that you're just like this just really doesn't feel right it doesn't fit and it's sort of weird it's a bit jarring but other than that it's a great game it's really worth the playing it's really quite difficult if you are not interested in uh, following strict police procedures this is probably not the game for you but otherwise it's a great game so that's police quest and now I talk about this game and the next uh, probably three or four games in the series the three sunny bonds then open season and the SWAT games after that and they're all discussed in the Sierra adventure which will be on sale on Monday so if you're watching this in a week's time it's already on sale and just go to any of those social media things down the side of this video and you will be able to find where to get a copy. So that's it. That's Police Quest. I hope you've enjoyed watching this and I will talk to you next time.